tilt. We were all knitting thneeds, just as busy as bees, to the sound of the chopping of truffle trees. Then, oh, baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now, chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked off four truffle trees at one smacker. We were making thneeds four times as fast as before. And that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week, he knocked on my new office door. He snapped. I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloots, who played in the shade in their barbaloot suits, and happily lived eating truffle fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffle fruit to go round. And my poor barbaloots are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the onceler, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. I meant no harm. I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory. I biggered my roads. I biggered my wagons. I biggered the loads of the needs I shipped out. I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more needs, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again he came back. I was fixing some pipes when that old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax, he coughed and he whiffed, he sneezed and he snuffled, he snargled, he sniffed. Onceler, he cried with a cruffless croak, Onceler, you're making such smogulous smoke. My poor swomy swans, why they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. And so, said the Lorax, please pardon my cough, they cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you've smogged up around here. What's more, snapped the Lorax, his dander was up. Let me say a few words about gluppity glup. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop, making gluppity glup, also schloppity schlop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old onceler man, you. You're glumping the pond where the humming fish hummed. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax, Now listen here, Dad! All you do is yap yap and say bad, 
bad, bad, bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering, and biggering, and biggering, and biggering, turning more truffle trees into thneeds, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sickening smack of an axe on a tree. Then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffle tree of them all. No more trees, no more thneeds, no more work to be done. So, in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke-smuggered stars. Now all that was left, neath the bad-smelling sky, was my big empty factory, the Lorax, and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, gave me a very sad, sad backward glance, as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with the one word, unless, whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago. But each day since that day, I've sat here and worried, and worried away through the years. While my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the Wunstler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So, catch, calls the Wunstler. He lets something fall. It's a truffle seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffle seeds, and truffle trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffle, treat it with care, give it clean water, and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack. Then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. The end.